Well, here we are at the bench. We talked about this before, and we're going to talk about some of the tools here. But before we get much further, I want you to understand something about the sound. What you're hearing in the background is your batch furnace. Right now, it's consuming about a million BTUs an hour. That sound you hear is going to become very familiar to you if you own a shop. You're going to get really worried when the sound doesn't sound right or when it's not there because it means your furnace isn't running. Unfortunately, it's not the best thing in the world for the quality of audio, but it is the reality of working in a hot shop. So we're going to leave it here. We're not going to try to take it out. Just have to get used to it. When you're in the studio, it's going to be a constant. So having said that, let's talk about some of the tools that we're going to use. Now, we've talked about the bench and the configuration of the bench with the curl and the rollers and like that. We've also got a couple little things going on with the seat. We've got an area over here that we can put our tools. Now, normally speaking, when I start out, I've got exactly the setup you see here. A cold chisel, which we're going to use to knock the piece off and to take it off the pontiel. A pair of jacks. Now, there's lots of different kinds of jacks. These are really great all-purpose jacks right here pick or an awl that we use to do bubbles, comes in real handy, and a steam pad. Now some studios they use graphite, people do use different things. I have found that the best steam pad in the world as far as my shop is concerned, we use the Wall Street Journal. There's no acid in the paper, there's no petroleum in the ink, there's not a whole lot of ink in it, and they work very, very well. The no acid is important because you're going to be inhaling some of the smoke that's created off the steam pad. You're using your local newspaper, something that turns brown in the sun. The reason it's turning brown is the acid. Acid's going to get in your lungs. So you don't necessarily want that. If you're going to use a newspaper steam pad, by all means, try to make sure it's the Wall Street Journal. It's going to be the safest, most healthy way for you to go. Okay? It's one of the things you learn over 25 years in the shop. That steam pad's my number one tool, I think. So now we talked about jacks. There's lots of different kinds. These here, kind of good all-purpose jacks. Wooden jacks. Bigger wooden jacks. Round jacks, square jacks, all kinds of different types. If you're only going to get yourself one pair, something like this with this kind of profile works. Now these have been in use for about 25 years, so you can see they're, they're getting a little worn. But a good set of these will last your lifetime. You don't have to spend $500 on them, but you don't want to buy cheap ones either. So uh, generally speaking, you're looking around $275, $300 bucks to get a reasonable pair of jacks. But when it comes to blowpipes, pontiels, jacks, everything I get is always from Steinart Industries. Uh, like I said, I've been in the business a long time, and, and Steinart, for my money, best pipe out there. We don't let other pipes in the studio simply because we've had failures with other pipes on the welds. We'll talk about that as we go on. But uh, buy good equipment, especially things that you that are going to help you make your living and that your life and your well-being depend on. Now you notice we've got a few other things hanging here at the bench. We're just going to talk about those real quick. These are basic tools. They're tweezers, okay? Tweezers do lots of things for us in the shop. Now, obviously, you can grab the hot glass and pull and like that, but they're also used to place bubbles where we want them in paperweights and real nice. You never want to grab the glass with your fingers, so that helps. When we want to cut something, two different things that we want to do when we're cutting. Usually, if we want to cut like a bit off or something like that, where it's going to be something round that we're cutting off, we're going to take and use our diamond shears. The reason they're called diamond shears is because of this diamond shape that they make. As we squeeze them together, you notice that it cuts off completely. Now what that does is it squeezes the glass and we end up with just a little teeny point that actually gets cut and we leave a rough surface on. That's going to become important later on. Uh, that rough surface can end up with little bubbles, little imperfections. So if we can do this, that's a great way to go. Now you notice out here there's a round spot on the outside of these. And what this is for is to grab a pipe or a pontiel. So if you're going to run a bit, somebody brings that pipe to you, you want to be able to grab the hot end right here, be able to move it where you want it, let you have some control over it, okay? Diamond shears. Again, this is a Steinart number. 
It's also good to have another pair of shears around for trimming open mouths and things. And these are referred to as duck bills, obviously because of the shape of the shear. When you're using duckbill shears or any other shears, say you're cutting off the open end of a piece to, to open it up or to straighten it out, one thing you always want to remember that as you roll the piece away, you want to be cutting in a downward motion down and across on the bottom of the piece so that what you're cutting is falling away. If you go in here and you cut across the top, that piece is going to fall. Chances are it's going to meet up with part of what you're trying to trim off. You're going to uh, have a mess there. It's not going to be too easy to work with. So remember, when you're using the shears, you want to cut down and across, okay? Lower side, let the glass fall away. Last one here, real simple piece. It's referred to as a rake. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the sharp end of this to grab into the glass and pull the glass. And when we do that, we can move that surface of the glass. So if we have a wrap on it, we want to turn it into chevrons, we can simply take a rake and rake that glass one way or the other. Okay? Now we want to talk a little bit about uh, safety with all of those things. Our steam pad is the one thing that we most likely need to talk about the most there. The idea here with the steam pad, and we're going to explain how this works. It's amazing. I you know a lot of people blow glass and not everybody understands why a steam pad works. Steam pad has moisture in it and we keep a couple of bottles around here, the old syrup bottles or dishwasher bottles or whatever, a little squirt bottles so we can add moisture when we need to. What's going to happen is that glass gets close here to the, the wet newspaper. The heat from the glass is going to turn the, pay, the moisture in the paper to steam. And that steam's gonna come out of the paper and it's going to form a barrier between the glass and the newspaper. So if you do this right, you have the right moisture content, and you're not being you know, overly aggressive with the glass, the glass is gonna float on that little bit of steam between the newspaper and the glass. So what we tell our students is, is if you do this right, even though you're gonna use this to shape the glass, it's never actually gonna to touch the glass. If it does, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see little pieces of, of ash coming off. You know, most likely some of them will land on your arm, uh, and it's going to uh, leave a little bit of ash in the, in the piece, and that's gonna leave what we call a little ghost image. We don't really want that. So we wanna make sure it's got the right amount of moisture, and it's uh, a, like a lot of things in the glass shop, temperature's really important. Think about it this way, it's kind of like baby bear porridge. You remember mama bear, papa bear, and baby bear, and mama bear's was too cold, and papa's bear's was too hot, but baby bear was just right. So around here, everything's gotta be kind of baby bear just right and with the steam pad that means just enough moisture uh, so that it can turn to steam and make that barrier but not so much moisture that is coming out the backside because that'll heat up and, and warm up your hand to a point you don't want so make sure you got the right amount of moisture and we're good the other thing you might notice here is that we have a little wax on the end of the bench and we'll uh, go through how to wax tools and like that at a later date but uh, it's a good idea to have a little straight carnauba wax is the best I've found. And uh, it's gonna help out with all of the tool surfaces that meet the glass. Now the next thing we wanna talk about are wooden implements, referred to as blocks, okay? Now blocks, uh, they, you wanna have them made out of the right materials. You can see they, they deteriorate over time. They'll, they'll get used up, okay? We start with fruit wood. You don't want to make these things out of pine. They're going to disappear in a short time if you do. What we've learned through experience is that fruit wood's the best thing. Cherry, if you can find it, is far superior to anything else that we're going to make a block out of. You can usually find it in pretty good uh, sizes. Now you can buy these. If we get into big sizes past what you can find cherry, uh, the usual wood that's used is walnut, and that works fine too. They come in different sizes depending on what you're going to work with. And sometimes we'll make a different shape to give us a, a particular shape. Comes a, in very handy, it's a good way to get control over your glass real quick without taking as much heat out of it as the marker does.